Buckle up, buckaroos, because Arrowhead just dropped the largest rebalance patch on us in Helldivers 2's short life. There were changes to guns, stratagems, mission types, deployments, and the planets themselves, so there's a lot to get through in little time. These changes literally alter the endgame meta loadouts many of us run, so you need to know. We're going to cover every single item on the patch notes, so bear with me. Before you ask, yes, we have tragic news which will affect about 80% of Helldivers. Our beloved Breaker Shotgun has suffered a nerf, and not a small one either. Let's go over it. Arrowhead have introduced planetary hazards to make the biomes more unique. Now, there's a chance of random environmental challenges appearing during missions, such as fire tornadoes, meteor showers, and many more. I don't know about you, but I think this is both awesome and frightening. It's totally the right thing to do in principle, but on higher difficulties you're dealing with so much enemy squad spawn in that the random odds of being devastated are already so high. I feel like this will add another layer of unpredictability, which I know Arrow had absolutely love after having played Magicka and Helldivers 1 at length many, many years ago. Eradicate missions now require more kills and enemies spawn more often. The time to complete the mission was previously shorter than intended and should now usually take twice as long to complete. I think this is a good move. Those missions were way too easy to farm on lower difficulties, and the runtime felt unnaturally short compared to every other mission type. I also really enjoy running them, so having both more time and more outposts and bug holes to destroy really gives me a democracy boner. Now, it's my tragic duty to inform you that the Breaker has had its magazine capacity decrease from 16 to 13, and its recoil increased from 30 to 55. Be honest, you knew this moment was coming since the start, and now it's finally here. It was good while it lasted. On the upside, perhaps more people will understand why I run the Breaker Incendiary for the Terminids and start to adopt it themselves, with the regular Breaker brought more in line with the other guns. Here's the part which cut deeply into my own heart. The Railgun now has decreased armor penetration and decreased damage against durable enemy parts. What this means in practice, I've yet to find out, but it might shake the Railgun out of being a must-have in the support slot. Running an overclocked railgun gave me the feeling of playing a shooter of old, or perhaps a souls with guns vibe because it relied so much on user skill to get the most out of. I love high skill cap plays, so I desperately hope the railgun is still viable for charges, bile titans and hulks. The flamethrower has had its damage per second increased by 50%. This is awesome and much needed because most flame weapons are currently underperforming. With any luck, this will make the flamethrower more endgame viable. The laser cannon has increased damage against durable enemy parts, increased armor penetration, and improved ergonomics. This is absolutely awesome too, because the laser cannon vastly underperformed many of the other support weapons. Its styling is super cool, so I'd love to see more people running it in higher difficulty loadouts. The Punisher shotgun has increased total capacity from 40 to 60, increased stagger force, increased damage from 40 per bullet to 45 per bullet. Now, I'm not sure whether this affects Punisher variants like my beloved slugger shotgun. I've seen some comments suggesting it does, so leave us a comment down below if you know. Meanwhile, the highly meme-worthy Breaker Spray and Prey now has increased armor penetration, or should I say any degree of armor penetration whatsoever. Increased fire rate from 300 to 330, increased number of pellets from 12 to 16 per shot, and decreased mag size from 32 to 26. So all in all, more spraying and hopefully a lot less praying. On the stratagem side, it's my solemn duty to inform you that the energy shield backpack has increased delay before recharging now. This will affect almost all end game automaton loadouts, so it'd be interesting to see whether the nerf is large enough to knock it down as a must have. The meme where the 380mm and the 120mm orbital barrages now have increased duration and decreased spread. This is cool, because one thing you could guarantee when a squad member deployed one of these is that your entire squad would be wiped out, no matter where they stood, and that everything you hoped to destroy with it would remain untouched. The orbital barrages were like unleashing meaningless chaos onto the battlefield, so with any luck this makes them more strategically viable. Now here is a massive one. They have fixed armor rating. This means that medium and heavy armors should be working as intended, which hopefully offsets the nerf to the personal energy pack. They have fixed certain bug holes and stalker nests which were unnecessarily hard to destroy. Fixed the anti-aliasing toggle not working on the PS5. They balanced lighting across all planets to solve cases where the game was too dark. My drop near fam should be thrilled about this, am I right? Space Scotland was like fighting in a terrifying highland void. Improved flashlight efficacy. Maybe we've raised it from one lumen to two, let's see. Increased visibility during sand rain weather on Errata Prime. Updated tutorial materials and lighting. 
improved cases where some materials could look blurry if lighting graphics setting was set to low, fixed timing issues that could occur in the Extract E710 primary objective, changed button interaction behavior for buttons in the bunker points of interest, Helldivers will now let go of the button after holding it for a few seconds. This is probably a good thing because having to press interact again confused the hell out of everyone. Fix some cases of large assets floating if the ground beneath them was blown up. Helldivers standing next to ICBMs during launch will get properly toasty with a chance of not so spontaneous combustion. This is hilarious and awesome. I was wondering why this wasn't already in the game as I stood right next to some launches. This is classic Arrowhead behavior. Random, hilarious environmental chaos. I can't wait to see what memes and what reels this turns up. Fixed, unthrowable snowballs after ragdolling. Can't say this broke the game for me personally, but to each their own. Fixed being able to use grenades after drowning. Camera no longer locked in the player's own corpse and blocking spectator mode. This is great and much needed. Looking at your own eviscerated self while trying to gain situational awareness on what your team is doing or where you're being reinforced was always mildly annoying. Helldivers now take damage from fire, gas, etc. generated by the players. And armor no longer stretches when dismembered. All in all, some solid and very necessary fixes in there. I'm going to jump in now and do some stress testing of the weapon and stratagem changes and get back to you with what's what and what's not, since this is the Stress Test channel. Make sure you're subscribed not to miss our impressions of the new meta coming shortly. As always, dive with liberty and I'll see you on the ground.